Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Vic Sinise, and we meet every Saturday at 9 a.m. Central Time. You just noticed that little QR code popping up in the corner. That's for you guys. Uh, it's a new thing I'm adding in. It's uh, Ask Euro Nurse. You can go ahead and scan that. It'll take you to a Q&A box where you can ask questions. Now, of course, if you're watching us live on any of our uh, formats, any of those formats there, you can always use your comment box to send uh, pictures or send in your comments and questions. But I know some people are watching or a lot of people are watching this secondhand and maybe you get a question, you know, on demand and you say, oh, I wish they would have, I could have thought of this. You can use that Q&A box anytime you want. You can go to our website and click on it from the website, too. Um, so feel free to use that. Also, I'd like to just say thanks to all of our YouTube subscribers. We have a goal. We're trying to reach the, the thousand mark. We're at 929. We've been growing about 100 subscribers every week. So you guys are doing a great job. If this is your first time checking us out, be sure to check out our website at euronurse.com where you can learn more about the show. Also, the best place to go to watch all of our past episodes, and we have 70 of those episodes. Hey, for those of you that are uh, watching us live, remember, there's the comment box. You just fill it in anywhere you're at. If you're not getting our newsletter, be sure to go and check us out and on our website and fill that out. Every Monday, we have a new newsletter coming through. <clears throat> Also, our Euro Nurse Plus area is the best place to go if you want to listen in your car. Go to any of our formats and download our or sign up as a member for our audio podcast where you can listen to our show in RN and assume a member and you want to help them out. Go to their survey, click that QR code you see up there in the corner and uh, it'll take you right to the survey. Go to our website if you want, euronurse.com. There's also a click on the QR code. It'll bring you right to the survey. It only takes a few minutes to go and fill that out for us. We got a great show. We have Dr. John uh, Melionis and his wife, Christine, nurse practitioner. They're going to be talking about this new invention. Uh, you're probably looking at it and saying, what is this? Well, I'm going to leave that up to them because they're going to tell us how it can help to prevent quaddy. We're really interested in learning more about that. And with that, let's go ahead and bring in our experts. Experts, we're going to bring everybody in right now. Welcome to the show, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, morning to all. So as I normally tell everyone, we like to do our own introductions. It's easier to not memorize people. So we'll let everybody tell who they are and what they are. Again, I'm the, the host and producer of the show. And... Uh, I've been with neurology for the past 40 years, so enjoying the way of paying it back to you guys. Now, I'm going to kick off with something uh, interesting fact. I'm going to bring it up on the screen here. So Euronurse is obviously being watched by more than just the uh, healthcare workers, which is the main goal of it. But we know that more people are watching it, uh, especially when I get some of these comments. Now, this came all the way from Italy. Somebody who had the aqua ablation, which we had episode 51 had the operation done and uh, says things are going well. What I thought was interesting is he spoke about how he, uh, the total cost for the whole operation, including everything, was 8,000 euros. And he said that uh, he had private insurance, which paid for a lot of it, and he had just paid his part of it. However, in Italy, he said public hospitals will carry out the operation for free, but you have to sit on a long waiting list. So maybe there's some advantages to our healthcare system. <laughs> Um, anyway, I thought it was kind of an interesting fact. Got people watching from all over the world. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring in our experts here. Lori, go ahead and give us your introduction. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lori Atkinson. I am a certified urology registered nurse. I've been in urology for 25 years now, and I currently work at a urology department here in Geneva and Winfield, Illinois. And I'm very happy to be a panelist on your nurse. I enjoy it a lot. Great. We enjoy having you on. John, so you just get in there at the very end. <laughs> I wouldn't miss it for the world. My name is John Lynn. I'm a private practice urologist in Gilbert, Arizona, which is just about 20 minutes south of the Phoenix area. And like Vic, what I'm doing is helping Vic uh, pay it forward by sharing my clinical and business knowledge in the practice of urology uh, among my peers. And I, I'm very excited to report that in the Facebook group called the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group that I run. We now have reached 2,502 members and it's all for free where we collaborate to share knowledge 
so that everyone benefits. And I just want to say during this Christmas season at the time of this recording, that Christmas is the season where you give without the expectation of receiving a gift. And that is what we're doing here on Euronurse, giving without the expectation of receiving. Back to you, Vic. All right. And then we have Victoria joining us, who's from the company that made that fancy product I showed earlier. Welcome, Victoria. Hi, Hi thank you. I'm Victoria Suarez. I'm Chief Operating Officer of UR24 Technology. I've been with the company for about seven years. All right, great. And our presenters today, we have a uh, group here, John and Christine Melionis, and I'm going to let them do their introduction, and then we'll bring up their slides and start their show. Thank you very much. Uh, we, I'm John Melionis. I'm critical care head of critical care at UT, and I'm the chief medical advisor for for the product. And uh, when we were asked to present, uh, Christine said, "Let's let's take a look at some of the episodes." And we we got sort of, if you will, semi addicted to the episode. We watched a whole bunch of them. <laughs> Uh, very, very exciting. We love the experts. Uh, John, John, I'm, I'm interested in business too. I've run, run a couple of companies, sold both of them. So I'm very interested in your insight in this as well. And so uh, we're very excited about being here today. I'm Christine Melianis. <clears throat> I'm a pediatric and family nurse practitioner, background in critical care uh, for peds, uh, congenital heart and electrophysiology, and also a Six Sigma black belt. And Christine helped uh, develop the guidelines for the CABSI in pediatrics throughout the country. Wow, very good. All righty, let me get your slides up on the screen and I'll let you take it away. Yeah, so uh, Vic asked if, if there was any kind of story to start. I think the best story, we're ultimately going to talk about this, this device right here. And I think you'll see in the end what an amazing invention this is. But it did not start like this. It actually started like a wiffle ball. Over seven years ago, an inventor, not in medicine at all, had a colleague and best friend who was having many, many medical complications from urinary retention, et cetera. And he developed a, this device, which was a, a way to externally eliminate uh, um, urine in the bladder through the device that we now see right here. And that went on to keep that individual alive for many, many years. This has gone over seven different modifications to what we have right now, which is the UR24 device. We're gonna talk about that in, in the, as we go through this. But first, let's just start with, it's amazing to me, and I'm sure to our experts here, that urinary catheter technology is, is really 4,000 years old, and it has not really significantly changed in those 4,000 years. So the question is, you know, can we do better? What can we do? I know that you guys, uh, uh, and as me as well, every day I'm in the ICU, the, there's people telling me, get the catheter up, get the catheter up, get the catheter up. And sure, we want to get the catheter up. We don't want anybody to have a catheter. But we have not really had a tremendous alternative to internal catheterization. And when we look at the, at the traditional internal catheters and our traditional teaching of when and what are the indicators, this is this the Houdini if you will, uh, nomenclature, hematuria, urinary obstruction, urinary surgery. Okay, those all make sense, I think, from all of us would say, well, yeah, maybe you do need an internal catheter in these conditions. But the cubitus ulcer, just to measure intake and outtake in, in the ICUs and the ERs, et cetera. How about this one, comfort care? I mean, who really wants to have a catheter place when you're in palliative comfort care? That makes no sense to me. And again, immobility. These, these last four to me seem to not make a lot of sense. But the question is, is, is how do we find an alternative, a real functional alternative to internal catheters that's gonna be safe, effective? Because after all, if we're going to reduce or remove or eliminate catheters, urinary tract infection, the one fundamental thing we need to do is eliminate the catheter, okay? And so we have to have an approach that's successful at doing that. And this is when, when the, this organization came to both Christine and I, after many years of, of working with ways to put in bundles, et cetera, and we learned that there's an opportunity for an external catheter to provide a lot of the functionality of an internal catheter. That's why we became very excited about this product. If you look at the CDC guidelines and they say, okay, how are we gonna eliminate urinary catheter infections? Well you get rid of the catheter, you use it only in appropriate patients, 
and you leave it in place only as long as it's needed. And I think everybody knows that. Try to get the catheter out. Minimize the catheter's use and the duration in all patients. Avoid the use in nursing home residents and palliative care, et cetera, but we're still doing that. And then, obviously, one of the main 1A guidelines is consider external catheters. And the problem with external catheters, as we know, is that you're essentially, most in most cases, you're just peeing on yourself and you have a, like Pure Work has a vacuum where we're sucking that off. And so you have the irritation in and of self of the urine and you certainly have the irritation in self of the, if you will, vacuum of that. And so that results in the potential for a lot of skin irritations, et cetera. So what is the alternative? What can we do? And I think, you know, this group, as, I, as we've seen some of the videos, you guys are very aware the both personal, physical, and economic impact of having catheters in place. No one likes having a catheter in place. Frequently, we talk to patients who have had catheters in place. Our own daughter had it in place when she had uh, chemotherapy, and she complained about the chemotherapy, but she really did not want that catheter in there. So it's a, not only is it a massive economic impact, as you can see, in some cases it's quoted as being $6.2 billion, but also the tremendous discomfort that comes with catheters is, uh, is not unknown. And when we look at these catheters and we look at how long they're in, if you, and one of the, I think one of the podcasts we've recently done uh, with one of your, your experts who presented and did a phenomenal job, realize that if, if you and recommended removing catheters, because we know if you keep the catheter in long enough, it will get infected. And when it gets infected, there'll be tremendous costs, not just in the, in the cost for uh, the money costs associated with that, but also the morbidity and mortality costs associated with that. So what can we do? Well, if we look at different external catheters, one, they're not active elimination. Two, they're very difficult to place. And in this catheter, if you see what we have there in our catheter that we're going to talk about today, it's just a tremendously, this is the male version here. We have multiple male versions to talk about. You can see that it, it, is, it is hanging on and adjusting and maintaining itself to the catheter, okay? And you're not able to get this off. So that's one of the really, and that provides now a closed system. So let's get into this. Let's take a look at that in a little more detail. So again, uh, the true catheter, we're gonna show you, we have multiple catheters. We have modified the male catheter multiple times and we have a catheter that's bigger and then we have a catheter that's smaller from the males. And we have a female catheter as well, which uh, Christine has over here. This is the female catheter, uh, which again is a, a little different because it has, a, a, if you will, more of a shaft in there. And then we have a, um, a pediatric catheter, both pediatric female and a pediatric male catheter as well. And that's what in the first, this is the first, just as, a, as, a, as somebody who spends a lot of time in pediatrics, the fact that we're able to have an external pediatric catheter is very exciting for us. When we look at this catheter, um, the, what, the, there's several, you can read, there's several components to it. It's, 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 um, but one of the things that's very interesting is that this catheter, you can actually apply yourself. So you, we have people who are, are putting this catheter on. We have a CEO of an organization that uses this catheter every night. He applies it himself, puts it on, turns on the device for, for uh, in Nocturne, and he uh, it really works extremely well for him. The other thing that is not only is it FDA approved, but it's also CMS reimbursed. Vicky was on the podcast as well, spent a lot of time and with CMS because of the fact that the catheter is a necessity, we've been able to get CMS reimbursement for it. And I know Lynn's very interested in the finances. So I put a few finances in the back of these slides to, to help us understand that. These are the catheters. You see the female catheter on the left and the male catheter on the right. There's two sizes of the male catheter. Uh, and we found, we've learned a lot over the last uh, two years about which catheter works best in uh, circumcised males and non-circumcised males, et cetera. And so we're very excited about uh, the studies. And we'll talk a little bit about that data. We've done many, many pilots. In our pilots, we looked at uh, you know skin irritation, et cetera, and the skin irritation was was minimal. We also have now in a uh, randomized controlled trial. In the randomized controlled trial, I can't tell you all the data on that, but it looks amazing. In some instances, we've been able to get almost three liters out, over out in a 24-hour period of active elimination. And these are the infant products the infant male and the infant female. 
This is the FDA uh, approval letter that we have. So we're FDA approved and we're reimbursed by CMS, which is a huge accomplishment for uh, an organization like us. So when we compare and contrast to other um, components that you look at the pure work, et cetera, and you look at, the, this is a, it's a closed system. It's for males and females. It's portable. You can take it anywhere. You can actually, uh, we have a charger. You can use it on your car. You can use it on a plane, et cetera. Um, and there's, because of the way the system is built, there's no contact with the urine and the skin, which is a very, very important component of our product versus other products where you have a lot of skin contact. This is just a, a couple of uh, clinical vignettes, if you will, with an individual, a male and a female, where they describe their experience with it. This was early in our in our course. We now have greater than 70 patients that have that have been on the machine uh, and on the device. And again, it comes with a pump. You have a portable pump or in the hospital situation, in the hospital, just stick this into the wall suction uh, and uh, into a container. And it's worked out extremely well. And you can see very liberating. Uh, one of the things that we that the nursing staff believes when you have something like a pure wick where you pee on yourself and you suck it up, you have to change the linen very frequently. In this device, you don't have to do that. So the freezing them up for a lot of time. And I think the the real component for the, the male product is the dignity of the male product. They can actually get trained where they can put it on themselves. What about the hospital? Well, in the ICU where we're using it right now, it's very exciting. We're able to, to get accurate I's and O's. We're not having catheters in there. We know that many, as you guys are very, very aware, many of these patients are severely immunocompromised, high risk for infection. Uh, as we went through COVID, we realized there was a lot of COVID urinary tract infections uh, because of the cyst status associated with that. So urinary tract infections had a massive increase during COVID. Uh, so we think that this is a, a great device at reducing the risk of infection. Step down units, we've now rolled this out into the step down units. Again, remember in this situation here, instead of one to one or one to two nursing in the ICU, now we're five to one. And so anything we can do to reduce the nursing workload is gonna be very well received by the nursing staff. And we've had great success there uh, in our trial and we're very excited about those, those positive results. So we think that this is gonna be a really exciting opportunity in the, in the hospital, but also in the outpatient arena, all, all of us who have had any kind of surgery, you know, you get a catheter in place when you get your hip done. Uh, and so then you take it out. And many times people feel like that's the worst thing that they've had gone through. So we think we believe in the outpatient arena, certainly in the palliative care group, we're working with an organization in with palliative care that has decided that they would really like to move away from any, having any catheters in place. And so it's been very exciting, but our initial data in there looks really, really positive. I think that's one area that we're very, very passionate about. I know Vicky's talked a lot about that, where we can try to help out those patients who are really having quite an uh, incredible, difficult time in palliative care. If we can get rid of that catheter, I think that would really give them tremendous dignity in their final days. So it's very important for us. This is for uh, all the business people out there, Lynn, especially for you, uh, we put these together. And if you look at our product, this product can stay in place for how long? Uh, well, this product can stay in place for about 15 days in the, in the inpatient setting and 30 days in the, in the home setting. You just take it off, give it a little quick wash and you're ready to go. So while it initially might be a little more costly because you're, you're continuously changing other products, so for example, PureWick, where you're changing it out frequently, the, the break point is around two to three days where we're showing that we're more profitable than uh, than the pure wick. So it should be, I think, you know, when we're all in the business of medicine, so it should be easy if we have an external catheter that's working, it should be, well, let's just go to that. But no, you have to do, you still have to do the math for the organization because they're so uh, steadfast with the Foley catheter. And if you look at it as you increase the amount of, uh, of urinary catheters that you purchase, then, then the value proposition goes up within five days. The hospital's enjoying a $51,000 difference in, in financial costs. You look at the Primo Fit, it's a huge difference, 32,000 in five days there. And then when it comes to the male PureWick, which is, uh, you know, seven, eight, that just came out, it's around $8,000 in a five day period. And also with the male PureWick, you have to shave the abdomen, you have to do a lot of shaving, et cetera. And there's a lot of uh, discomfort associated with that. So not only has this product been successful, uh, it is also financially impactful as well for the organization. So I'll finish up here and let's and say that you know we 
we're really excited. We are um, beyond trials. We've done first model pilots, and now we're in a randomized trial. And the data coming out of there is quite quite exciting. We certainly know that it's it's going to be very impactful for the people who have urinary incontinence, and uh, there's no question about that. But we're also very excited about the opportunities that we have in the inpatient units and the uh, the uh, chronic facilities as well. So I'll stop here and we'll just take some questions. Hey, great, great presentation. I'm just gonna move you over to the center there. Um, I do have a question. So it does work by suction action to uh, draw the urine out. What studies have been made that it's not causing hematoma, et cetera, from that suction? Yeah, so we've done a, we've done a bunch of pilots on that and we showed that there is a very, very little to no suction trauma, as long as it's placed appropriately. Uh, in the beginning, we had some some opportunities for improvement, let's say that, regarding the placement. And so we've learned exactly where it should be placed. Because if you see inside this tube, down in the lower portion of this, there's a little bit of a of a solid stabilizer, stabilizer here so that this doesn't collapse. And it, if you actually put the penis on this, then you will get some suction trauma. But if you have it at any place else than that, uh, and you see the distance between here, and we've realized that this, here's the, the stabilizer here, and here's the tube right here. If you, do, if you keep that distance right there, then you're in great shape. So in the beginning, and that's the learning phase we had when we had our initial trials, initial pilots, we had a couple of uh, minor, minor suction trauma components to it, but since then we've had zero. Yeah, we we did a very important study where uh, I, I'm I'm summarizing a bunch of studies and Christine's kind of pinching me into the side here, reminding me that we did a whole trial on on pressure. The other thing that's really and I think all you guys will really be appreciate this in here is is two valves and these two valves will not allow you to increase the suction to too high of a level. If they try to crank, let's just say you go over and the nurse tries to crank up the because we're we're in the 110, 120 range for suction. If they go over there and they try to crank it up to 200 or 250, these will crack and then this will not work at all. So it will, it's a safety valve system that we have in here. So it doesn't allow you to crank up the suction higher to a high level that would result in injury. Uh, that's a safety thing that was put in a couple of years ago. So it's a very, it's a, it's a great, great safety device because, you know, sometimes I, I know me, I'm over there, I'm, I got a chest tube, there's a kid that's bleeding, I just turn the suction up to like a bazillion, right? And try to yank the, the blood out of there. And uh, if I, I turn the wrong one, that wouldn't be perfect, right? Because you know, sometimes in a, you, know, you just you just turn the knobs, right? Uh, in this case here, if you did that to this, this would crack and then you would not, it would not allow any suction. So it's a great safety component. Yeah. Um, I think if you could just demonstrate with your finger, just show how this, how well that holds, because that's always been the issue with, uh, cath, you know, the external catheters. I mean, that thing, you can pull on it. It just does not fall off. Yeah. It's a, I mean, it is a, I, I this is truly, you know, we both, before we do any product, you know, we tried it and you, I literally, as a male, you can get up and walk around the room. You know, you could probably do minor jumping jacks. I mean, it's amazing. The and the male, when you put it on, you 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 don't put on any suction, and then you start with suction. With the female, you are going to want to have some suction on there. So the female uh, has requires a little suction. The male is is a is a barnstormer. I mean, you cannot get rid of this. If you want to, you can, of course, but it it stays on whatever mobility you're on. The female. Uh, you know, if you get up and walk around, okay, that's it's going to fall off. But if you move around in the bed, right, which a lot of us do, and I know Vicky's used it as well, it still stays on because of the suction that, that attaches to it. Great. Well, I'll open up the questions to the rest of the experts, and then we'll see what's coming in from the audience. Um, so I had a question. Is it a one-size-fits-all? So that that's a, a great question, right? And that's what we initially thought with the male, for sure. Uh, that did not turn out to be correct. And, and it's not only is it not a size, but it's also a circumcision. And if you go, we're, we're in multiple other foreign countries. And uh, in many of those countries, 80, 90 percent of the male are not circumcised. And so in that case, in the non-circumcised, we use the bigger device, whereas in the circumcised uh, patients, we're using the smaller device. So it's not only the size, but it's also circumcision. 
Regarding the female, uh, we have one device, and that seems to be about correct for the female. But in the male, we have two right now, two devices. Uh, we hence also had. M and M. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, hence the M and the M plus. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So it's 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 gone through a bunch of different variations, but now we have the M and the M plus. We interestingly named the smaller one the M plus. I think that's probably to make men feel better. But it, <laughs> <laughs> marketing. <laughs> Good marketing. Yeah, the M plus is, is the smaller version, right? But and, but you you can see that uh, you know again if, if you have if you're uncircumcised we we this is the learning process of a new organization and I think that's one of the if you ask me what's the best part about the organization besides obviously eliminating catheter urinary tract infection which is super exciting it's the way we've been able to modify the product and learn Vicky Christine who's an expert in this and myself have worked tremendously with the engineer who's a great individual and always trying to change things. He's trying to change, he wants to have five different sizes. And we're like, okay, we're, we're working pretty well with two, but I mean, it, it really, and then he's the one that invented the safety component to it when we said, hey, wait a minute, you know, we can't, we, people, when we brought it into the hospital, Christine spearheaded this, when we brought it into the hospital and people were using it, they were like, just going up. And I'm like, whoa, 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 we gotta get a safety thing. And he put the safety valve component to it. So I think the organization is, is a great learning organization. I think that's the most. We had a question. Actually, I had this question too. How can we get a sample of this? How do we, uh, um, how do we see one in our office or, you know, demo it? Yeah, Vicki. Well, Vic has one, right? Vic, you got I, one. I did get one set from the company. Yeah. Yeah. So Vicki, you're, uh, you're in charge yeah. of that. Yeah, if you want to have samples for your office, you just um, you can send in your um, address and we can mail you samples. It's it's amazing that many of the doctors we've spoken to, they get the concept, but they don't get the whole idea until they touch it. And then they, you know, because that product that John is touching, that it's so soft and you don't understand it until you actually, I mean, it's, it's like no other um, product that, that is used in this arena. Great, thanks. We also had a question from Susie. Can a patient with a buried penis use this device? Well, we've tried it. Uh, we, we've actually tried it. And I mean, I guess, what do you think, Vicki? Would you call that? I mean, we had some success with it. Yeah, there's some success. Like if you can um, push back the scrotum and get it on, it'll stay on. Yeah. However, um, if it's completely buried, um, then that's that makes the fully medically necessary. I think I think that the, you know, you would think that that it's one size. I think you you asked the question uh, appropriately. One size fits all, but that's not not true. And there's also some techniques and and people who are experienced at it. And I know most of the people who are on the show because they're on the show or experienced can figure out a way to get around uh, that component to it. But you do have to manipulate it a little bit if you just try to put it on without doing any manipulation, it's gonna fall right off. And you can tell very, very quickly, right? If it's on and it's staying in place, it's gonna work. If it falls right off, it's not gonna work. Yeah. I'd mentioned earlier when we were talking that I remember those old finger traps that used to get in the stores and the harder you pull, the harder you couldn't get it off. And when they sent me the sample, because first when they kind of told me about this, I'm like, another external catheter, come on, they never stay on. They go, no, no, trust me. I'm sending you a sample. You're going to got to try it, see how it works for yourself. And I'm playing with this thing and I'm like, like really yanking on it and it just wouldn't come off my finger. And I'm, you know, that's much smaller than most men's penises. I mean, it, it just really stays on. I like the fact that you can keep, uh, you know, reusing it too. It's not something where it's, it's got, it's not a sticky, um, tactile stuff that's in there that comes off, you know, like an adhesive. It just, yeah. just. That's one of the problems with the the cath the external catheters now is that the nurses have to go in every three or four hours and reapply the the adhesive, and then that starts eating at the skin and causes skin abrasions. We had a uh, we have a daughter who just became a nurse, and um, she she knows a little bit about what we do, but uh, she was, but she doesn't know much about this product. But she was lamenting the pure work the other day. She was like, my God, I have to go in every, you know, every two hours and change things and this, that, and the other thing. And it was like, well, I wanted to, uh, we were like, you probably have to do a testimonial, but we'll have to change your last name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I have several questions. Go ahead, Jan. What is the makeup, the composition of that distal ring or the thing that attaches to the penis? Got it. It's, it's a TPE rubber. Got it. It actually um, sweats a little bit of mineral oil. So just, uh, I don't know many people who are allergic to mineral oil, but rubber, possibly. And yeah, what is the, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I think that's a, we're, you know, very interested in, in seeing if anybody is. So we, the, the patient population that we're uh, doing our study in is, and I'm sure you're aware, they are in the ICU. So the amount of adult diagnoses these people have is unbelievable. I mean, you know, they. I was very, quite frankly, we were Christine and I were as clinicians. We're like, ah, uh, are we sure that they're not so immunocompromised that everything's going to fall apart? And uh, and it's gone well. So I, I'm 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 sure there will be some thing that's allergic to it, but we haven't not seen it significantly yet. Well, thankfully, there are a lot of other alternatives if that's the case. What yeah. is the CPT code for this, if, or HixFix code, if you have to order it through CMS or online, some company? You got that, Ricky? Still not quite hearing yet. So, uh, One second, it's... Um... Or, and also, what's the ordering? How do you order it? Hang on. <laughs> okay, A6591 is the code. And then if you go to our website, there we have all of our authorized distributors, um, one of them being earthturns.com. Um, they um, carry our product. Uh, Demotech carries our product on their website. And uh, Vitality Medical are the three bigger ones for um, website ordering. You said A65? It's A6591. Uh, okay. I'm just going to share that with the audience. Great. And that's I, a I dedicated just, medical group that we were granted as of April 1st. Right. We went, Ricky and I presented that uh, to them, and, and they were like, they were, this is amazing. Let's, let's make sure we can get people to get it. So that's why they gave us an opportunity to have it reimbursed. Yeah. But that, just that you know, that said, we, pl we priced it um, reasonably so that um, people without insurance could afford it because we know this is an area that um, people don't really talk about. And, but they do have problems. And we have a lot of elderly people that use it that just, they just buy it outright. So, um, you know, with Medicaid, medical devices, you know, the, the cost of them are, is usually outrageous. And we try to keep it as low as possible and keep our overhead as low as possible so that we could reach people that actually need the product. Uh, that's, I think that's great. I'm in a lot of uh, different pure WIC user groups. And that's one of the biggest concerns is the cost of these pure weight catheters. And even though it's not recommended, of course, not recommended by BD, a lot of the users are wa taking them apart, washing them, and then reusing them. Whereas this device eliminates that need. And you just buy yeah. it once and you can keep using it. And I do have a, it. go ahead. Sorry, they get reimbursed every 30 days too for a new one if they want a new one. Oh, that's good to know. Are there a lot of hoops to jump through for the practitioner who wants to order this device? As far as, or do we just order it and then there are no prior auth or whatever hoops to jump through? I'm not sure about the 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 billing. Um, that's not my expertise. But um, any practitioner can order it and we'll send you a send you samples or b if the um, patient wants to order it, we can we have all the websites on our on our website. Got it. Now, a, yeah. Go ahead, John. There's also a video on the website that would provide you, you know, some knowledge about how, you, how it goes on, et cetera. But anybody who's on this, on this, you know, uh, webcast, if you would like a short 20, 30 minute full on demonstration where we put it on, uh, you know, we, we, we have a model, if you will, uh, and we could get your product and we, and all three of us, Christine and myself and Vicky, I know I can speak for all of them, would be more than happy to, to do a quick demo to your team. We do it all the time. We do it all the time. Yeah, that would be great. I would like to know the soup to nuts on how to actually implement this because I think a lot of people will be interested. Something yeah. that you haven't mentioned is the use of a pump. And th there's a specific pump that you recommend. And I think it's a fairly generic type of a pump. 
in the pure wet community, there's always people looking for alternatives to the pump that BD sells because it is very expensive. So I was wondering if you have other, besides the one that you recommend, other pumps that people may be able to look into that is compatible with the, the catheter that you have. Our product works on any pump that has, and it's not necessarily the pressure, it's the liters per minute. As long as it's 27 liters per minute or greater, um, the, it actually works on the PureWick pump. And we have people that used to use PureWick and have to our product and are using the same pump so they don't have to buy a new one. But we have a really reasonable pump that's on, they call them a pump on a plank, and but they're like $179 retail. And But the problem with those is that they're noisier. So um, with the male, we have many patients that are using it without any pump at all. I just got a um, recommendation from an older, she clearly is an elderly lady. She wrote it into our mailbox of her husband and she had a bedside commode. And by the time he got out of bed, he would pee on the floor and so forth. And she had to get up and help him. And she was sent the, you know, I can share it with you after the show. But uh, she said it's a godsend to her because now she can sleep through the night because she doesn't have to help him anymore when she puts our product on. And because he's a male, she, she doesn't bother putting on the pump because when she first put the pump on, um, it was really noisy for her. She said, it, she said it was like a fish tank in a room. Then she said her husband takes out his hearing aids. He doesn't hear anything, so he's good to go. But for her, she just leaves the pump off and leaves it attached to the canister, and then he's able to use it. Yeah, that's a big, big safety issue for patients too, of course, you know, especially the Huge. elderly running out of bed to go to the toilet and then they end up falling, breaking a hip. So Vic, right. Vic, Vic brought this up to me when we were first, when we were being introduced this morning and he said, you know, I could easily see this, you know, for nighttime um, bladder issues and, and I think that, that urinary con incontinence and, and it's true. You, you don't even need to put it to the pump. You just put it to the canister and, and it'll, you know, because it's a, a closed system that we get all along. So there's a lot of applications that we're we're realizing um, just as as the product sets come up. Have they considered making it with a smaller uh, tube? Because you know, like we have a company that that uh, was on our show that has a leg bag system that looks like underwear, but that yeah. long tube would never work. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, I've seen that actually. That's one of the videos we watched. Yeah, because that that was kind of interesting. But yeah, they we. You know, again, we're, we're in production phase, and in an early phase. As as we move along, and people come up with suggestions, we're, we're going to try to modify things. Yeah, uh, and and we, the, the use without a pump is something that we really it's just ticked over the last three to six months, uh, and we're realizing that a lot of people just plug it in and don't even use a pump. So I yeah. think there's a there's there is a definite opportunity for that. You know, I, I could easily see doing that myself, you know, because mm -hmm. as we age, we, we're getting up two or three times a night. So one thing that a lot of the pediatric caretakers don't think about is the male prostate. And uh, this catheter, unfortunately, will not address that gentleman with the BPH and urinary retention because of BPH. But I can definitely see a lot of applications, as you said, in the inpatient facility, or someone who is neurologically incontinent. Yeah, I mean, as, as you know, we've spoken to many urologists. So they always say, well, how high of a BPH can you go up to? And we've had patients up to three. You know, when you start getting up, getting up beyond, you know, the two to three range, you know, we're not going to be able to open up something that's physically obstructed. And that's not the goal. And certainly when you guys do your repair and you have some stuff in it, that is not our goal. We are not trying to, 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 to solve that problem. We know that that's not going to happen. But certainly, you know, uh, when, when it's mild, that we can have some – opportunity for improvement. And then in all these other opportunities, I mean, look at the inpatient, the whole inpatient area and the ICU and the IMU and the ER operations, home, palliative care, et cetera, and nocturnal issues that, that we all have. So I think that there's a lot of opportunities, but certainly if you have significant structural problems, we're not fixing it. We I think have just the, the skin care alone is, is huge. You know, somebody that's bed bound and incontinent, you know, you're going to have skin breakdown. Yeah. We have a, uh patients that have muscular dystrophy that don't use their diapers anymore. And we also have a patient that's a quadriplegic pl pl and his um, daughter puts it on him every night and he stays completely dry. And she said it's, it's a life changer for her. And I didn't catch, did you guys mention what the cost per unit is? Not, not including the pump, but just a single unit. If it's it a cash pay. Um, the retail price is $129. 
And then um, the reimbursement value um, from Medicare is $84.58. Good to know. And that's good for a month generally. Yes. Yeah. Um, we've had people use it longer as long as they take good care of it, especially in the home setting. In the hospital setting, we expect them to switch it out more often because people are much sicker and um, just to, to keep them fresh and make sure that there's no bacteria build up. And what is the care instruction? What are the care instructions? How do you wash it, clean it in general? Um, you can either just wipe, you know, because when you put it on the penis, you have to make sure the penis is clean. So the inside stays clean because it's not leaking. Um, then when you take it off, you just wipe the outside and then you can reapply it, make sure, making sure the penis is clean and dry again. Um, in the home setting, uh, you can just, I, what I did was I ran it underneath the, water, the, the sink to run water through it to clean the whole hose out and then hung it up until the next time I needed it so that it would stay dry and there wasn't any urine in the hose. But um, that, you know, as long as you take good care of it, um, it should last quite a while. Okay. Are there any problems with odor? Not that I noticed. Um, like I said, but I cleaned it out and then I emptied the container into the, the um, toilet when I used I used it for about three weeks because I wanted to make sure that there were no side effects. And, you know, it's, the only side effect that I have is a, I'm like Pavlov's dog now. When I see one of our pumps, I have to, I'm like, oh, I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, wait, no, I don't. <laughs> you know? the, the, both of you, uh, John and Vicky, uh, talked about something that I just want to reemphasize, which is is the dryness. Uh, we get very excited about these other devices, putting them on, and, and we clean off the, let's just take the penis, for example. We clean it off and then we immediately try to apply it. Uh, you definitely want it to be dry, clean and dry before you apply because it'll, it'll, it'll have a tendency to slide off. So one of the things we learned is people clean it and just immediately slip it on and there's some sliding. So but clean and dry and you could say it also comes with the cleaning solution too as well to, to do that. But in the hospital, it really just, just wiping it down and, and reapplying. And speaking, a lot of people have questions about the canister with the Purex device. Are the canisters, can you order those fairly easily? And then tubing, some people are asking about the, the elbow that goes onto the canisters served from the tubing. It seems like everybody's asking about that every other day. The um, canister we picked for the uh, pump that we recommend is a reusable canister and it's reimbursable for Medicare every six months. And the reason why we picked it is because it has a screw top. And for elderly people, they can they don't lose any of the suction because they're able to screw it on. Whereas the disposable canisters, you have to snap on the top and yes. people have trouble with that. And then you lose some of the suction. And then when you get a new canister, a new elbow and a new bacteria filter comes with it. And that is all ordered through your company or can you a can third party? Them. You can order them through us. Um, Drive to Vilbus sells the canisters, but um, they it's, it's actually a European canister. So um, we get them in and then we'll stock them. Lori, I see some questions coming in from the audience. Yeah, I think if you could just tell us again how often you should clean it. I think you guys said something about every three, two, three weeks or so. Oh, so you you can change it, keep this on uh, for 15 days in the ICU and 30 days at home. And we clean it, you know, once a shift or uh, every, every 12, 24 hours, we'd like to take it off and clean it. Okay. And um, somebody wanted to know if it, it pulls on pubic hair. That's sometimes a big issue. Well, the great thing about this device is that since it's, it's and especially in the male, since it's attached directly to the penis, it, it does not pull on it at all. Uh, and in the female, you know, we have not had that because of the way that it's structured, but certainly it requires a little minor training on how to, how to put it on. So you, so you put it on the right spot. I mean, John, as a urologist, will know that uh, sometimes we can get it in the wrong spot. So we want to make sure that it's in the right one. So I think that that's when you have it in the right spot, you don't have any difficulties. Would you agree with that? Okay. And again, you guys did say that it is non-latex, correct? Correct. I think that was all the questions from the audience so far. Great. Well, audience, if you have any other questions, please put them in now. We uh, Great discussion. I, I Again, uh had to reiterate that uh you know when people come up to the program now it's kind of nice we've been in around enough that people are looking for us and say hey we've got a great idea would you like to put the product on our show i'm like well you know i need to be convinced myself to make sure this is something i think that would be you know a useful product and i, I was just blown away by it because like i said i've 
you know, been in this field for 40 years and keeping guys dry with external catheters is it's been a nightmare. Just, just rarely works. And I've tried everything from the ones with the bands on the outsides, the ones with the latex, uh, ad, you know, adhesives on the inside. And I even remember one that used to look like a tulip that actually clipped or stuck to the tip of the penis. And that was a nightmare for people, but they just didn't uh, stay on this one. I, I, would like to see it in, in the real world, but I think it's going to be one that's going to be a winner. What's nice about our product too, is that it actively eliminates the, the urine from the bladder. So if, unless you're um, incontinent and you can't hold it all, but if you're, you have retention or something, you can empty the bladder and then you're good to go for three or four hours. Like a normal person, you can go to the store and you can do things with people and then you just reapply it and empty your bladder again. So now I got one question I saw, or one comment come in. I'd like to see if they would clarify it. Uh, I love your content. Oh, I thought it was, it was your accent. I see content. I think, <laughs> never mind. I thought maybe someone liked our accent. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm reading the small print. I guess I should, <laughs> once I saw it on the big screen. Well, I'm glad you love our content because that's what we really are out here for. And if you like, I thought the Chicago accent, maybe y'all like that too. <laughs> We, we can tell. <laughs> uh, I still don't know what a Chicago accent is. Yeah, I know. We, As we apparently we, I have one too. So We, we I, deny I, that we even have it. But uh, <laughs> there was a question that was sent to me from Lori, uh, I mean, Andrea, who's not able to join us today. I'm gonna. It has nothing to do with your product, but I'm going to throw it out there in case some people can uh, look into this or answer this. And it has to do with the... Uh, compounding pharmacies requiring when you compound drugs that they be mixed under a hood. Apparently the latest legislation that they came out is asking that or requiring genomycin for intervesical administration to be mixed under a hood. And she just wants to know what other clinics are doing in the area to try to get, you know, their intervesical genomycin for infusions. Um, I don't have an answer for that, but I, I'm sure somebody out there watching the show might. So. I might, I mean, so we do that. Uh, we do, they do require it under a hood for us. We don't have a hood in our office. So we actually have the hospital pharmacy uh, mix it for us. And then um, we have a service that comes and delivers it to our office. The shelf life, I can't remember, but I think for that particular, like gemcitabine or um, things like that, I think it's a longer um, shelf life. It, you really have to check the shelf life. But we do. Yeah. We're lucky enough to have a courier that comes and brings it from our pharmacy at the hospital. So someday Amazon will probably get into it, or Mark Cuban's pharmacy. They'll just deliver. right, right. But yeah, I think it's going to be a problem because I think that the logistics of having a, a hood in your office is, you know, whether you've got the space for it or the cost of it is justified. You know, depending on how much you're mixing. Not like a oncologist who's mixing chemos all the all the time. But anyway, feel free to add those into our, our comments. If you do have an answer for that, I'll pass it on. And Victoria, if I can ask about the canisters, I'm very into the logistics of how to actually apply this thing from beginning to end. And on the PureWay users group, every other day, somebody's asking about the canister, the tubing, the, the elbow, etc. Can other types of canisters be used as long as the suction device had delivers 27 liters per minute. Yeah, the, every, any kind of canister could be used. We just ordered a, because ours is a 1200 um, cc canister. We just ordered a 3000 cc canister for one of our clients because um, they were overfilling it at night and they can still use it with the same pump. Um, it may not fit into the, the holding bin that comes with the canister, but they just have to put it on the side and they just have to make sure too that it's below the patient. Yeah, it's gravity. If that, that definitely helps. And I'm thinking in my mind for your company of creating a frequently asked questions of everything that we're asking in the show. What is the CPT code? What is the cost of the device for cash pay? What type of tubing can you use? Where do you get those? What kind of canisters? What other canisters can you use? What kind of alternative pumps if they don't want to use the one that you guys recommend, which may be quieter, which may be able to run on batteries. But believe it or not, I have some users of PureWake who travel in an RV. So they have to figure out how to run a longer tubing or use a different type of pump or something that's a little bit quieter so it doesn't disturb the partner in the same room. 
Well, we have our tubing comes with our product. It's it's built in. Um, it can go. You can put an extender tube onto it. It's another six feet. That and our product will work up to twenty feet away from you. Um, we've tested it up to twenty feet. Um, our product also works on battery, and it has an hour battery backup inside the 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 the. Um, that's one of the reasons why we picked the pump that we picked because it comes with the bag to um, to eliminate some of the sound. You put it in the bag and it's about 52 decibels, which is like the, the sound of your dishwasher running. Our normal people talking actually talk louder than that. And then we also have a, recommend another um, smaller that only has an 800 cc and that's um, it's a very small tank on it, but that's the one that can go on airplanes. And it also they also have the DC plug on them. You say one hour of battery life? Yes. Yeah, and then it has a DC plug too that you can plug it into a DC um, adapter. And then we have the audience ask, um, what's the catheter shelf life? Um, it doesn't really expire because it's just um, the you know the rubber tubing and so forth. And we make it in a thirteen uh, ISO thirteen four eighty five compliant manufacturing facility in Miami Lakes, Florida. So um, that's one of the beauty things about making it in the clean room and so forth is that if the your, if the penis is clean when you put it on, um, then the urine in the canister is considered a clean catch, and you can use it for your analysis. Well, great. I think we've uh, got all of our questions answered on it. I'm going to put a little plug in for next week's show. Join us about the foundation. Since 2007, the mission of the Suna Foundation is to improve urologic health care and the lives of people with urologic health issues. They fund urologic scholarships, educational programs, and nursing research. The foundation offers several scholarships from chapter startup and enhancement funding. Member funding to attend conferences, recertification, and recognition awards. Learn more about the Suna Foundation on Euronurse.com. So yeah, be sure to join us next week to learn more about the Suna Foundation, how you can become a part of it, donate to it, how you can receive some of those scholarships. I actually received the scholarship for the uh, past conference to pay for my attendance to go. So big uh, appreciation for that one. So with that, thanks everybody, all of our great uh, experts that were on today. Appreciate all you guys uh, do for the show and we'll hopefully see everybody next week. Thank Bye -bye. you very much. Hi John, Bye, Christine, Bye, Vicky. Thank you.